What we have here is an example of an ash tree, Fraxinus excelsior. It's one of the most widespread trees in Britain, found all over the place. It's a fantastic timber tree, but it's also a tree that's under threat from ash dieback disease, so the future of this tree is uncertain. We're going to go and take a closer look. The ash tree is a really good example of using the method we talked about where you identify the bud of the tree first in winter. The ash has really distinctive buds. But let's take a quick step back. Let's ask that question. Are the buds alternate or are they opposite? And here, they are in pairs opposite. There's a pair here, a pair here, a pair here. And there's actually two either side of this black conical bud here. So it's opposite. So immediately we can rule out a load of species of tree. So what else tells us it's ash? these very distinctive black conical buds. There's no other tree like that that's native to Britain, very distinctive of ash. And they're quite large for the size of the twig as well, so they're very distinctive to see. You can spot them from a little distance away. The bark as well is also a very smooth grey, very smooth grey bark, unlike the more mature stem at the back there that's begun to fissure with age. So that's very distinctive there, and that's the way we can tell it's an ash straight away. Go to the end of the bud, follow that method, and there's no mistaking it. So here we are at the main stem of the ash. And as we said earlier, this one's been allowed to grow freely, nice and straight, but it also coppices very well and has been coppiced for hundreds, if not maybe thousands of years. And in hedgerows, it gets flailed a lot and takes the flailing quite well with the regrowth. So don't always think that ashes have to be single stem like this. They can have multiple stems depending on how they've been managed or interfered with by people. Now we think of the ash as having smooth bark. Generally that's what I have in my head. But as a tree ages, much like the oak, the bark fissures. And it fissures vertically like this. So generally these lines, these clefts are vertical down the trunk. And the bark is a grey colour, but I'm hoping you can pick this up on, on the uh, video here, that there's a lot of green here, and this is not the bark, this is lichens, and lichens really love ash. And so this is a green lichen that's come in and is growing all over here, which from a distance you might think, oh, it's got a green bark, perhaps it's not the ash. So get in close and really look at the detail, and there's all lichens covered all over this side of the ash here, um, using it as a home. So the ash tree can grow to up to 40 meters tall. It's a big, big tree. And this one has been allowed to grow on its own. Uh, I don't think it's had much influence from uh, people chopping it or anything, trying to coppice it. So it's got a nice straight single stem, which is quite distinctive of ashes that have been allowed to grow naturally. The other thing that's distinctive, there's two, th well, two or three things actually. At this time of year in the winter, you can use to recognize the silhouette of the ash tree from a distance. So as we discovered before, the um, buds are opposite. So we can look for that silhouette out on the tree. What I tend to think of is a devil's pitchfork kind of shape like this. And you can see that on the very ends of the tree there. You can see those, those pitchforks, those uh, three tines of a rake sticking out. Another thing you can look for, on the edge of the tree, to see outside, do you notice how the branches kind of sweep up like this? They have an upswept uh, turn to them. And that's quite distinctive of ash. The horse chestnuts do it as well. One more thing to look for at this time of year is the ash keys, the fruit of the ash. And they start off quite green, and then as they ripen, they turn brown and papery. And each one contains a single seed. And they're referred to as keys because they look like bunches of keys clustered together there. And you can see their outline, and they hang on well after the leaves have dropped. So at first glance, you could think it's an oak with the brown oak leaves hanging on. No, they're all hanging downwards, and you can see that from a distance. They're like bunches of keys, if you remember that, and that's another distinctive teller that this is an ash. I just want to demonstrate um, how we can recognise the ash from a distance again. It's those ash keys hanging on which makes it very distinctive. You can see on the uh, tree here in the middle of the shot, all those bunches of ash keys that hang on in winter. The tree next is bare, 
nothing on there and then behind that holly there's another ash with all the keys so again another bare tree and we pan over to our main ash we've been looking at and it's absolutely full of keys so really good teller in the winter of what you're looking at even from a distance one other feature that you might want to look out for on the branches of ash trees later in winter is what we see here on these branch tops these multiple stalks these are left over from the ash keys which were blown off in the November, December winds and were left with just those bunches of stalks there which are really quite distinctive. So you might well see that later in winter on your ash. So one mistake that uh, some people can make when identifying trees in winter is to look at the leaf litter on the floor directly under the tree. This can work um, uh, if you're in a, a woodland that's uh, dominated by a lot of the same species such as an oak wood or a beech wood. But it's something you've got to be very careful of as well because um, you might get leaves blowing in from other nearby trees. And some trees don't leave their leaves. Let's have a look down here. So under the large ash tree now, I'm looking and actually what we don't have is any leaf litter from the ash left over. I can see a little bit of holly here or there and a lot of broken up stuff. This might be a little bit of the ash um, left over, but it's really in poor condition. Oak leaves, beech leaves, which have kind of high tannin levels will hang about, but um, don't always be tempted to look right under the tree. In fact, under here, if I look under this ash tree, we can see a hawthorn leaf and there's a hawthorn just over there. So we need to be careful at uh, relying too much on the leaves on the ground under the tree. Sometimes it works really well, but we need to understand what's going on with the tree um, and what goes on with the leaves as well, how long they hang about. Now, although we don't have the ash leaflets on the floor here for us to help identify the tree, we do have a lot of the ash seeds from the ash keys we identified earlier. They're still hanging on the tree. They're littered all over the floor here. Now, if it wasn't for the bracken all under this tree and actually throughout this field, under the tree here, this ash would be littered with lots of little ash saplings because it self-seeds really prolifically. So in an ash woodland, uh, where you've got kind of more of a clearer floor, you will see a lot of ash seedlings coming up underneath and there's another teller and that can give you next to perhaps a mature ash tree, a chance to identify a very young sapling at the same time and compare the two. What I want to show you in these woods is a really good example of what I was talking about with young ash saplings absolutely littering the wooden floor. If we pan across you can see all these young trees with the pale green smooth bark. That is all young ash. And as you can see it's such a prolific tree when given a bit of space and a bit of light it will self seed all over the woodland. There must be hundreds here just in this small area and in time they will self-select and self-thin as the stronger specimens make their way towards the light and the weaker ones die out. Looking at a forest of young ash saplings like this is actually a great way to get up close and personal with the young twigs and buds and really get your eye in so you're confident in identifying the ash tree. Here we have a young ash sapling. There's the distinctive terminal bud and two opposite black buds here and here. But what we do have, which is quite a rare find at this time of year, is a leaf still hanging on for dear life. Although I think one gust of wind and that'll be down on the woodland floor. But it's rare to see the leaves still attached at this time of year. So we're not gonna use the leaves as a key identifying feature in the season of winter for ash. So, if you have an area of woodland that has some mature ash trees in, look across the woodland floor. If you've got a clearing, you're quite likely to see hundreds of ash saplings sprouting their way up towards the light. Now, in times past, the ash wood was one of the most highly prized timbers in the country. And before plastics took over, it had a whole variety of uses and still does today in traditional greenwood crafts. So it's a naturally springy wood. So it's been used uh, very much for anything that needs to have a bit of a spring in it, um, such as, as parts on wheels and wagons. 
and for um, axe handles, tool handles that might want to have a bit of spring and flex in them and of course using them for bows for the medieval bows and arrows and ash wood it was classically used for that along with yew and elm. Ash wood also cleaves really readily as well very easily it splits very nicely which shows it has a nice straight grain it's a beautiful kind of clean white wood to use. Over here we have a good example of an ash which has got a uh, multiple stem. You can see one, two, three, four main stems coming off this ash here. And that means that it's been coppiced at some point. Uh, at some point someone's come along, cut this and we've had four main stems grow. It's a really good example of how an ash can look different compared to the single stem ash we looked at earlier. Let's look at something else that's important too. We've got a good example here of the smooth grey green younger bark opposed to the more mature tree that we had there. Often in my head this is what I think of when I think of ash trees because when you're doing green work and crafts it's often this kind of size thing that you're cutting down so I see a lot of this bark a lot more. Much much smoother and even more so when it's an even younger sapling. Now I've been guilty of getting tree ID wrong in the past and there's a good example of a mistake that I made here. I mistook a ash tree for an oak. This is an ash tree, and it's a really good example of that fissured old bark that you get in the mature trees. You can see the long, deep fissures, which are very characteristic of oak. And in this path, we've seen quite some mature oaks that look just like this. But again, looking at the buds and looking at the opposite pairs of those buds and the twigs and the way the tree grows, it's of course an ash tree. You can see the younger growth here, the smoother grey-green bark coming out of the same tree and then looking up all those upturned branches, this is without doubt an ash tree. But an easy mistake to make. So I hope I've given you the confidence there to go out in winter and identify the ash tree by its buds, its barks and other key indicators. It's getting cold now and the sun's going down so it's time to go home and make a cup of tea. Thank you so much for watching the video and I hope it's piqued your interest to find out more about the beautiful native tree species that we have here in Britain. But before you go, I wanted you to know that this video is actually just a taster of a much larger tree identification video course that I've created for people just like you. The full course covers over 50 tree species that you'll commonly find here in the UK and we look at those tree species in all four seasons, starting in winter to spring, summer, and then finally autumn. In each season, we're gonna be picking out those distinctive features, which means you'll be able to identify the tree no matter the time of year. As well as videos like you've seen today, the full course also includes hundreds of photos, you're gonna get questionnaires on tree species, and you'll also receive a certificate at the end of the whole course. Let me help you see the wood from the trees as I take you from tree beginner to tree expert. To find out more, simply follow the link in the description below and you'll also get access to two more free tree ID videos as a preview. So you're just one click away from becoming a tree expert. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you again in the woods.